Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. In the last episode we explored kind of the ruins of Alchemoth looking for bits of airships and we killed some fog beasts. This episode is actually going to start off looking for some unique monsters but turns out there's also a fog beast here so we will start with this Swellow or Luga fog beast. Why not? It's only level 71 so we really shouldn't be able to put up too much of a fight. I'm going to shadow eye myself. I need to make sure I do some um, arts soon because I'll be like a lot of art coins after this. Probably too many. Um, Alright, let's slit this guy. Um, can we break or topple him? I'm guessing he's just too damn big, yeah. That's the annoying thing, is like, if, if enemies can't easily be broken, you can't do the thing anymore of like, hey, we can break them in a chain attack, because chain attacks aren't a thing. And it'd be fun if there was like a, I suppose the Pond Spectre thing topples, but like ones that just like did some like break or something like that, so we had some equivalent of that. Anyway, that takes him down, so that is Swellow or Luga off the list. Number 15. Um, what did he drop? Anything useful? Mm -hmm. Not really. Uh, anyway, I am specifically looking for... There we go. This big lad is the Boyan Rostine. Uh, I feel like I've fought exactly these guys next to him before, so I actually don't know how I missed this guy. Uh, but apparently I did. So... Also, he's not toppable. And he's bound me. How irritating. Because, um, yeah, I was trying to do my, my old cyclone maneuver. Because that's a lot of fun. Um, where's he gone? Oh, he did. We can do that, bloody... Uh, let's try and see if we can break him that way. He's resisting break. He's not immune to break. So that's a good sign. But frankly, he's so, le so level relative to us that actually I think by the time I've got the bastard broken, uh, he'll just be fucking dead. So Oh, yeah, I've got him broken. There we go. Someone topple him, please. Oh, I, he's basically dead anyway, but I'm still ponspecting the shit out of him. Oh, that was a good one. That was not so good a one. That third one's very hard to hit. Fun fact! Noticing that one up to the left, one of the ponspectors gets fired off. That's actually 1-1. One, one. Uh, only when you have got 1-1 one, one in the team will he get fucking yeeted into next week uh, when you uh, fire off Red Comet, which is fun. Um, anyway, so let's... Take all that crap. Right, what do I want to do this episode? Um, I might even take on... No. Oh, there's another easy-ish one near here. Let's go... We basically need to get up to that bit there, which is actually weirdly, I, don't th I think, not connected to this bit up here. Oh, I might be able to drop down on it, though, because there is another unique monster down there, which I will open with. I say open with. We're like four or five minutes into the episode. We're a quarter of the way in. We ain't opening with shit at this point. But yeah, down here, I believe. I did try to take this guy on quite a while ago, a while ago, because I remember finding the name Quandam Grimbalom fantastic. Uh, but much like that last one, he is also a very small, unique monster for us now. Now, now we are onto large fry. Um, not really a phrase that happens, is it? Uh, you use the phrase small fry, um, but no one talks about large fry. Oh, we managed to... Oh, we didn't manage to break him. Well, I'm going to kill all these bunnets around me with a single cyclone, hopefully. No, that actually didn't do anywhere near as much as I was expecting. Though it did topple one of them, which is very funny. Because, um, yeah, I, I... That is fun, that cyclone combination of just Shulk can break everyone in front of him and then topple everyone he broke. And then he can actually technically daze him with... Um... With Shaker Edge, though, I don't really do one of them. Did I just miss? Oh no, it's it missing me, probably, I was gonna say. I shouldn't be missing shit from this kind of distance. Heh <laughs> my blast. Oh, who's who's put a pawn to sleep? Oh no, a pawn has put. I, I look like, much as it is fun to have, you know, this many pawn specters running around the field, it's fucking hard to actually keep track of what the bastards are doing. But you don't have to! They just run around doing nonsense. Uh, anyway, that kills Quandam Grimblum, so let's just finish off these. Uh, bonnets that have come with him. Right, let's clean up these chests as well. Anything useful, we'll see. Probably not. I think my equipment's pretty good at the moment and whatnot, so... Right, with those done, we are going to actually head to Grandel and look for quests near the Grand Arch. I think this is the guy we're after up here. Yes, lot. Hmm, seems like it's lacking, lacking punch. Anything else we could use? Huh, you want something from me? Your face is kind of have that look. Right, I see. That sounds rough. And you came from Companion's Cape. Then, uh, I've got a question for you. On your way to Grand Dell, did you come across any hard-looking rock or rare materials or anything like that? We'll say we saw ether deposits. Yeah, I know about those. We have a few of them in Grand Dell as well. Ah, well, still. Thanks for telling me about that. I've got something to talk to you about as well, if that's all right. Could you get into more detail? You can speak freely. Shulk is a very good listener. Right, so I'm currently making tools for fixing and expanding the ramparts, and I'd like to make them stronger. That's why I've been after better materials. Well, actually, I've got an idea, but I'll need a catalyst to make it work. 
I'm not so tough to track him down by myself, but since you knew all kinds of other materials, I figured, you know, ah, say now I think about it, I couldn't have just asked you lot to get it and bring it to me, could you? That'd be way easier, right? The catalyst I want is found near the Baru Ruins Cave. It's a stone that people call the Cerulean Shard. That's your reward. Huh, maybe I could upgrade any tools you're carrying while I'm working on ours. I can work with anything you like, like, for example, that ether pick you've got. How about it? I bet I could strengthen it to improve the output, so you can mine better stuff. Not too shabby, eh? Yes, there's a reason I want to do this quest now as well. Finding happiness. So we've got to find the Cerulean Shard from Barurun's Cave. Ugh, I'm really glad you just stopped to be walking by, not specifically looking for you at all. Well, don't let me stop you. I'll be waiting. So, we'll grab that first. Um, though, I've... I've I've also, I've done a tiny bit of research, I'll be honest. Uh, the few things we need for the Collectopedia, we actually can't get until they're unlocked in a quest. Much like the kind of cream wheat was unlocked by a, a quest, we'll have one uh, in a second that will we'll do that as well, which is quite interesting. Anyway, where is this thing that we need to get? So it looks like it is actually in the cave itself, or in a little like, outcrop next to it. Oh, it is actually just on an outcrop next to it. I really thought it sounded like it was going to be in the cave itself. Ooh, that's... Deeply sinister. Anyway, let's grab that. That was definitely not always there. That's definitely one of those search ones that isn't always kicking around. It only exists when you're actually doing the quest itself. Anyway, let's return that to Lot. You look, look dusty from the road. Any chance you have my catalyst? Yeah, that's it. Thanks a bunch. I knew I was on to something when I asked you Lot for help. Right, let's get to the good park. Lend me your ether pick, won't you? So, this is something I've been wondering about for a while. Sorry to keep you waiting. What do you think, huh? Sleek form factor, right? You can feel the power at a distance. There are ether deposits in Grandel, too, so feel free to test out the improvements for yourself. So now we get level 4 uh, ether crystals, which is nice. We also complete the quest, uh, hook, uh, yeah, hook, line, and sinker. Finding happiness. Uh, hook, line, and sinker is what we're needing to do next, because that also unlocks those final few collectibles. Uh, so that's quite nice. And then he'll do stuff with the thing as well. Uh, but I am now looking for... A what is it called? Um, a not knop on. Um, the other species that's here, Vreda. There we go. He's the one we would be after. Uh, we'll get the quest for him in just a sec. But I just want to demonstrate now when we mine tension swing four. It's a shame tension swing is shit. It just makes changes in tension happen more aggressively. But yes, Vreda is the final one we're after here. I say final one. This is the final quest that's on my list of stuff I want to do. Beyond that, then I'm back to you know. Blind playing, basically. You're the ones that helped Inners out, aren't you? I make basic necessities for the hoax here, but to tell you the truth, we have a slight issue at the moment. Could you go into more detail? I'm working with Bartholomew to make up a tool for catching fish that he dreamt up, but we still lack some resources. If we had some half parts and snare wire, though, we'd be laughing. I don't suppose you could help us out. I very much could, by the looks of it. Both of them should be relatively easy to find on the miner's shoulder, but sadly not in the immediate vicinity. You might find them outside the walls, though. If you do find any, please bring them to me. No problem. Leave it to me. Great. Uh, we'll be waiting. And indeed, we just happen to have all those ones hanging around. We've got a lot of collectibles here. I see you've managed to find the snare half parts and the snare wire. Wonderful. I think we can implement these straight away, actually. Won't be a moment. There we have it. Here, have one for your troubles. Uh, just before you go, could I also bother you to deliver one to Bartholomew? Now, I expect you'll find him at Tranquil Tarn. So he gives us the To Catch a Fish DX, which is a fast track fishing tool defined by Vasop Follow Me and built by, built by Vreda. He should be able to explain to you how the contraption is operated. Alright then, safe travels. So, we now need to take this uh, to Bartholomew, who is down in Tranquil Tarn, as they say. And the advantage of once we've kind of completed this quest and got this sorted is that this then makes the final few, um, what are they called? Uh, ooh. Very nice. Uh, makes the final few um, collectibles that we need available. Does he disappear at night time? He just... Oh, yep. Wow. And it suddenly started pissing it down as well. Lovely. Um, none, that was that was not great in, in many ways. Are you, you're not Bartholomew, are you? No, you're a high-end here. Grandel resident. They didn't even give you a name. Right, let's turn the clocks back. Um... Go full share, and there he is. Um, right, Bartholomew. Hold on, isn't that the catch of this GX I asked Vered to make? You brought it all this way here for me? Oh, how wonderful. I'm glad everything worked out. Such a big relief. Mr. Shulk was like shining star. Even so, I couldn't have done it with you, na you na without you, Nene. Hmm? You seem to have double the number. One is for your personal use, then you want me to teach you? Say no more, I hear you loud and cl clear. In fact, let me give you a live demonstration right this moment. I would actually get to see that. 
Ah, is that not glorious? Now do you see how easy it is to fish? Opens up a vast ocean of possibilities, doesn't it? Why, you could even fish up angel bream and gentle clams here if you so desired. And that is if you're lucky. So that completes hook, line, and sinker, and also makes those two animals he mentioned new collection points available at Tranquil Tarn, and they've just appeared now. I'm going to go around and do a lot of swimming. The final collectible we need beyond those is this strange as well. I don't know where that is. I'll look up that to be sure. But I, if I haven't already, I'm going to put a quick step that I got on Shulk. Um, because we're going to be moving around uh, a lot. And that's real handy to have. And quick step is actually just generally handy on Shulk because then he can... He moves around a lot in combat and then that way he can... Um, he can be where he needs to be. Um, it's all on the side on the side. Oh, have we got both of them already? That was very quick. Um, yep, we have. So we got the Angel Bream and the Gentle Clam, which finishes off the... Um, the... Animal thing, which gives us Valak bracelets, which we know are going to be shit. Apparently, the final uh, strange one we need can also just be found in this lake as well. So let's swim around till we find it. Speed her on, please, I suppose. Oh, that was very quick. Man, I barely even need the speeder on at all. That completes the Collectopedia for the Bionis to shoulder. So that gets us the Valak sandals and presumably some kind of Valak gear as well for doing the whole thing. The Valak top, yes. Uh, all shit equipment, uh, but it's a look for Melia. Oh, let's put it on. We just, I suppose we should show it off, shouldn't we? I'll be honest, this is dangerously close to violating my kind of no swimwear slash underwear rule. We'll keep it on for a bit, but not too much longer, I suspect. Um, with that, um, I'm actually going to switch over to being Nene for a bit. You know, mix things up. What are we going to do? Um, let's... Let's do the quest for Hyetha. Fuck it. Um, we've got a bit of time left on the episode. Let's actually uh, ask some people about this. Because I've kind of done the, the little side quest I want to do for now. And we'll just we'll finish off the episode with this. And then we'll probably just do some more side quests next episode. Hey, get back here, you. So, we've talked to these Grandel Militia. A Hyetha crystal, eh? Well, that's the first I've heard of it. But now that I think about it, I actually have a rough idea where you might find one. I hope it's what you're looking for. Blast, you know what I can't recall? It was a long time ago, so my memory's a little hazy. Sorry, your best bet might be asking a fellow squadsman of mine. He's on the ramparts and bound to know more. Oh, uh, now we have to walk out all the way to the ramparts, don't we? Actually, no, we can just warp all the way to the ramparts, which is much easier. And did I see an ether deposit down there? Yes, I did. We'll head over and mine that, and then I'll head up onto the ramparts and find you, man. Strength down. That's not amazing, but not terrible. Sleep resist. That is not great. Um... How do I get up onto the ramparts? Oh, is that what this tiny little gate here does? I suspect it is. Uh, it's nice to see they do actually close the door behind you. Do I have the ability to open it? No. Oh, I can just go through the little side gate. Uh, that. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, we can get up here this way. Should probably actually track the main quest now, just to be sure. Um, it's just, it's sad. It does seem that it's actually not possible to get onto that whole thing above you. Um, Oh, Xenoblade. Normally, if you see it, you can go there, but I guess not always. Anyway, let's talk to this high-end guardsman. Oh, Aether Crystal. Oh, I think I know what you're getting at here, but I'm not entirely sure on the location. But I do know there's supposed to be a very rare Aether deposit near here. An old lady called Sarja told me about it. You might be better off talking to her for details. I got interested myself and even tried searching around Nerthus Necropolis, but I couldn't find a thing. From what Sarja told me, there's a good chance of finding it inside a cave, so that's why I thought it was a good place to start. Alas, if it really is not a cave and it's not there, then I'm stumped. Still, that doesn't mean much. There's, there'll be other places to check. I can't say for certain, of course, but I do think we're talking about the same thing here. I expect you'll find Sarja Hero's Rest down at the other end of Grand Dell. She's a kind old bird, always worrying about our welfare and that. Anyhow, better get back to my shift. Hope I was able to help a little. Sometimes the voice just comes entirely on the tiny voice clip you do when you talk to him, and he just sounded vaguely like he was going to be Ray Winston. Uh, but fuck me, that one hurt my throat a lot more than I was expecting. So, Hero's Rest is a... Oh, da chewed. Uh, Hero's Rest is a bit of a swim over from here, so frankly, I'll have a brief drink while I'm getting over there. Ah, uh, yes? Ah, the guard at the ramparts told you, did he? He and my late friend were on good terms. Naturally, I had to regale the man with tales of my friend's escapades. I believe the one that may be of particular interest to you is the time this friend, a high entier man, discovered a crystal. He was a real go-getter, that man, always traipsing around from the day he set foot on the shoulder. He would tell me all sorts of stories from adventures to entertain little old me. I remember it like it was yesterday. The sky was a brilliant blue, birds were singing. I'd come to pay my respects at the graveyard like any other day. 
And then along he came with a biggest smile on his face and took out an object wrapped in cloth. Said he found a strange crystal alongside an ether deposit. And what a light it gave off! The cloth it was wrapped in wasn't enough to stop it shining through. Ah, it was a sight to behold. The core was translucent, yet it gave off a pale glow, warm, yet somehow ice cold. It was like being bathed in turquoise sunlight. I'd never seen anything more beautiful, and I don't believe I ever will. Sadly, it dwindled to nothing in a matter of minutes. If there had been anything left of it, I would have kept it as a memento, I'm sure. I remember him telling me how incredibly large the deposit was, drooping down from the ceiling above. From his description, I imagine it might have been something like a stalactite, which is why I'm convinced it must have been in some sort of cavern. And despite, but despite the deposit's size, the crystal he'd retrieved fit comfortably in the palm. It must have been formed over a long period of time. Ideally, he could have told you exactly where it was located. I'm afraid that's possible, because he's sleeping quite peacefully now, and really can't be disturbed. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you the exact location, my dears. Still, I hope that little anecdote was of some use to you. I pray that you, too, will be able to find what you seek. Thanking for advice, morsels, Miss Sarger. Now seemed like a good time to report news to Mr. Radzam. Indeed, let's do exactly that. So that's how things are. It seems we owe Miss Sarger and her friend a debt of gratitude for the valuable information they provided us. It's just my conjecture, but the crystal may have been highly responsive to heat and, sub and sublimated when exposed to sunlight. It's fascinating, isn't it? I have to say, its properties are quite unusual. And I agree with Sarja, I think it would be found in a cave, like she said. So the soldier said he'd already searched an earthless necropolis, huh? Alright, let's think of other options then. If you follow Fime Lane, which breaks off from Thulus Way towards the northwest, you'll reach the Forbidden Hushland. It's a dangerous place though, so it hasn't been mapped out very thoroughly. It has by me. Nevertheless, there is meant to be a cave-like location thereabouts. The man who found the crystal must have been a formidable swordsman. It may be that news of the cave's existence may be from him that news of the cave's existence reached us. Very worthy. I pray you find a high ether crystal there indeed. You're the only ones who can rely on to harvest it, I'm afraid. Good luck. And if you do find a high ether crystal, be careful to keep it away from strong light as you carry it back. And that completes the search for high ether, still a quest that gets clocked off. With information about the ether crystals in hand, we're here as are a step closer to defeating the Fog King. And immediately gives us the quest for high ether. Go and find one. We'll do that in a bit. Uh, but we'll end off the episode with, um, with one more quest from, let's say, you, Celestana. Ah, good of you to come by. Might I ask for a spot of help? I could really use an assist right now. Good friend, give Teensy a bit more explain. As you probably gathered, we used these ancient structures for housing. When we first arrived, they were already deserted, ruined beyond almost all hope of repair. We've been doing our best to keep things tidy, but with the march of time, the rubble starts to pile up. We'd like nothing more than to clear it out, but with our numbers, we can't shift the heavy stuff. That's where you come in. Me and my army have not bought, is it? Ha <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting you to drag it around for yourselves. I was hoping you could get us some hover stone. It's a mineral with levitational properties. If we could lift the rubble using that, a few pairs of hands would suffice. Ah, Rubble Trouble, excellent name. Uh, three pieces of hoverstone at Salt Nar Seal Island, Pill and All, and the Scapular Lance. Thank you, hoverstone can commonly be found on those places I just said. Those three pieces should be enough to make our work swift and easy. Nadia is decidedly girl for job. Meh, Miss Belly is mighty alley. No wonder Dad upon had crush. <laughs> oh, that's quite good. Anyway, let's uh, track Rubble Trouble. Um, but I think the three places should be um, obvious. Yep, yeah, so there's one off Pelinol, one up there, and then a third one right next to the Scapula Lance. Cool, we'll do this one first. Oh, that's not up here, it's... Oh, yeah. This, that, see, that bit always looks like it's going to connect to... It does connect to Pelinol. What the fuck's all this... To oh, the, oh, it's... Somehow it doesn't think this is the closest one to me. It's trying to route me to the one that's on the way to the Forbidden Hushland, uh, which is insane. Oh, look at that! A jungle quad wing, fog beast. No, this that was uh, right. I, I'm aware that sounded really sarcastic, but that was genuinely serious. Like I was surprised to see a uh, jungle quad wing, quad beast, quad beast, fog beast here. Melia, could you hit it, please? What's the problem? The bastard won't even start a fight with us. Do I have to really, really get up in his grill? There we go. Oh, he is tiny, in fairness. Oh, Fog Beast Surges! Fog Beast are more powerful than their regular monster equivalent. In addition to that, they also spread a Riot Surge in a set radius around them, drawing in nearby monsters. Enemies who come under the effects of the Surge will be aggressive towards Shock and the party. Additionally, these enemies will be affected by the Riot Aura, increasing their level based on the strength of the Fog Beast. Well, that's kind of cool, so you kind of like semi-fog shit around him. Uh, oh god, all this shit's gone nuts as well. Well, fortunately, we've got a huge army of Pond Spectres, so that isn't going to be a problem at all. Indeed, we will Magnum Starch and... After that, sword drive. Where is the one, the actual fog beast one? Oh, he's dead. There we go. Cool. That was nice and straightforward. Uh, I'll just kill all these raged stuff off camera because they're actually pretty small. Okay, they've got bigger, but they're still small. 
Ha, fun fact, that jungle quad wing is actually the first, because it's the lowest level of all of the fog beasts. Um, that's what they're ordered by on my list, so... Cool, I'll finish these guys off, um, and then we'll grab the stuff we need from here. Oh, it seems I've already got what I needed from here. I guess I picked it up during the fight. Uh, cool, before we head on to the next one, because I keep forgetting to do this, I'm going to go buy some arts books. Oh, we've got 11 coins, we can get quite a few. Let's get Shadow Eye, because I use that quite a lot. Air Slash, Slit Edge, Backslash, uh, what about Melia? Uh, Sun Flare I use occasionally. Mind Blast I use. Then uh, Nene, I think. Um, have I got Magnum Starch? As I have. I guess Shield, Kusmash, and Mild Down are ones I use. And I do use Bone Upper and Chive Sabata. And basically now I think I've basically got all the ones for all the arts I actually at all use on a on a regular basis. Um But Yeah, there we go. Um <laughs> just Yep, there's not nothing more to say there actually. Shaker Edge, fuck it, why not? Right, let's actually make sure they're all leveled up properly. Right, with that, let's get the next two. Uh, the one on the scapular land looks nice and easy to get. Indeed it is. What is the rooting on this thing doing? Like, I'm near this one on the scapular lance. It's like, ah, you want to head off a... No, it's because it's I'm not tracking the right quest. It's just trying to constantly point me to uh, the Magmel Quarry. or Not Magmel Quarry. Um, Zeg Marga Quarry. There we go. Magmel Ruins is what I was thinking of. Finally, we'll just head up to Saltnar Salt Seal Island to get the third one. Oh, there's a fog beast down there. There's a hoad. Oh, it's a hill, actually, it looks like. I'll, I'll grab this first, then I'll hop down and do that fog beast. That's our third bit of uh, Hoverstone. Kill the Fog Beast quickly while we're here. Oh, it's really, it has, it's done the whole riot thing here very much so, but that shouldn't be too much. Um, right. Ah! Yeah, a lot of these Fog Beasts... Are, <laughs> again, I think it's because we've done a lot of the Pond Spectre stuff, and frankly, how could I be expected to not do the Pond Spectre stuff? But I think I've ended up, like, quite overleveled for where the quest's expecting to be. But also, like, yeah, most of these Fog Beasts are, like... Coming in at like below level 70, so it's like, I think I expect you to have got to that point much earlier than I did. Anyway, there's loads of them here to the point where this. Oh, if I press the button, which I didn't, but. And wait for it! There goes 1 1, shot off to the side. Uh, well, that did a lot of murder. Right, uh, I'm gonna finish up the real little guys here, then I will see you back at uh, Celestina, or whatever the name of the person who gave us the quest was. Oh, sweaty cloth, I hate that every time. You came back come bearing Hoverstone, I see. That'll help with the cleanup a lot. I don't want to really want to stay here forever, but it'll be nice to make the place that little bit more tolerable in the meantime. For another thing, it seems to me that another good deed to leave it neater than we found, not all tumble down and derelict. I'm sure the people who once lived here would hate to think of their old homes as overgrown piles of rubble, too. In any case, the area should be getting a lot nicer very soon. And it's, and it's all thanks to you. I really appreciate it. Nene, I hope it was of help for, helpful helpings. That one was definitely on you this time, Nene. And that completes um, the quest, Rubble Trouble. And with that, I think we will wrap the episode up. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Next episode, we'll do a couple more quests around Gr Grandel, but then we'll also go and try and get that Hyether Crystal. I'm trying to just mix and match. Bit of plot, bit of bit of side stuff. Uh, I'm actually going to try and take Kino for a spin, because I haven't done that yet, so I'll make sure I do that for next episode. Hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day. <laughs>